and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jabe. I'm Jake Jabelson, and this week we are going to learn how to generate SQL queries from plain text with the help of GPT-3. That's right, we'll do a step-by-step -step guide for how to deploy a local web app using OpenAI's GPT-3 API and MBA data. Now, SQL is one of the most helpful languages you can learn today, but what if I told you you could generate SQL queries without knowing how to write SQL? That's right. All you need to know what to do is how to ask a question in plain English, and out pops the equivalent in SQL. We'll use MBA data uh, for our playground because who doesn't love the MBA? And before we get going, I want to give a special shout out to Shreya, Bora, Devin, Gulan, and Michael, who published an incredible GPT-3 sandbox repo on GitHub, which we will more or less use right out of the box with a few edits to fit our use case. The back end will use Flask, the front end will be React, but don't worry, we'll be spending most of our time in Python. As far as requisites go, Python, an API key from uh, OpenAI. You're going to need Yarn and Node 16 installed on your computer. We probably won't go into much detail there, but again, I will link to the blog post in my comments. So without further ado, bon appetit! Okay, I'd recommend working with VS Code for this project. And in there, we can create a new directory and you're going to go ahead and switch into it. You can also launch a new terminal within VS Code where we'll go through some of our requirements. Um, so first thing we're going to do is actually go to the repository. We need to clone the GPT-3 sandbox repository I referenced. So here you'll see this is the wonderful repo that has a lot of details on how to get set up. Again, we're going to follow this mostly step by step. However, I'm making one change to use python.m as our environment variable solution rather than what they had. But here under the code, you can go ahead and copy this. And we're going to go back to VS Code. Within this, we're going to go ahead and write git clone and paste that in. Now, one more addition we want to make at the end is let's just create uh, a folder name for this and call it demo file. So we're going to go ahead and run this and it's cloning the repo. And now you see it here, these demo files. So let's switch into these demo files. And we are now on the GitHub branch that we cloned. And next thing we want to do is create a virtual environment, which we will do with the Python, then them, and we're just going to call it Vemv. Um, I've been doing that this way forever. Again, virtual environments kind of help keep everything contained. If you mess up something, easy to start over, uh, easy to share, easy to clone. Go ahead and run this. Uh, this will create the virtual environment, and then we must activate it by writing source vem bim activate and again replace them with the actual name of your virtual environment but you see here that we are now active because uh, this is showing ahead of the um, code so now let's clear that so next thing we need to do is install the requirements and again if we go look at the repo you will see within this api there is this requirements text that has everything we need you see the python i guess it actually has python.m which i didn't notice until right now uh, but it has Flask, it has some of the other things we need. So to install this, we can go ahead and uh, let's just see it is in API. So we're going to go ahead and say pip install r and tell it where is that requirements file. And you'll say it's in the API folder. So it's saying go into the, in the API folder and install these requirements through pip. We run this and it's going to install everything that was in there. So now we know it should work because uh, it's up to date with what was in the repository. And again, I'm not entirely sure if we had it. It looks like we did, but uh, for posterity's sake, since I have this in the blog post, we'll go ahead and install uh, python.m again, which we'll use for the environment variables. So let's clear this um, and we're looking good. Now we got everything we needed. Next, we need our super secret API key from OpenAI. I'm not sure if it's still in beta, but they've given pretty wide access. So hopefully you can get this. Um, if not, again, apply to it. Usually you're off the wait list. I know this isn't as hot a ticket as Dali at the moment, but um, still might not be for everyone. And if you go over to your API keys, you'll see here there's a secret key. You can reveal it or you can just copy it. Now we'll go ahead and uh, copy it because we're going to reference this to then, you know, basically tell OpenAI, hey, it's okay. Uh, we gave it the password that we can reference our account and call it through the API. 
and we'll head back to VS Code. And within these demo files, we're going to create a new file that's going to be .m, right? And this is where we're going to store all our environment variables that we um, care about, the ones that we don't want to update or upload to the internet, which again, this git ignore will say anything that's in the .m file, do not upload that to GitHub. Um, so basically here, we'll just write the export and we're going to call it the OpenAI key. And that is equal to your secret API key, which I will paste and do some magic editing so you can't see it. Um, but you're going to go ahead and save it and basically say, hey, I can now reference the OpenAI key instead of showing you what it is, we will reference the OpenAI key as an environment variable. Great. So uh, next thing we're going to do is go over to our demo web app, right? And uh, this is where we need to configure that OpenAI key we just created. So again, we're using python.m, which we're going to go ahead, import OS. We will go ahead um, and from.m load, uh, sorry, from.m import load.m, right? And then we got to basically load.m initialize it. Okay, so we're going to add that. And then again, the changes we're making here is to this key name, um, we're actually going to call it, uh, get it from the OS, the get environment variable, and we'll call that the, the OpenAI key, and we'll just use one quote there. So now we're getting that key name, and then the next thing is we're going to set it in a slightly different way. We're just going to say set open AI key, and that will just be passing in the key name which we have right up here. So just one slight change, again, not making a huge difference. You could probably figure it out the other way, um, but I have always used the .m um, for Python and it's worked. Uh, so last thing we need to do is yarn install. So you need to make sure you have yarn. Um, I did brew install yarn, and then from there we'll run the yarn install, make sure we have everything. You gotta run this once, one time to initialize everything before trying uh, anything of running the demos. And here, what we can do to see if everything is set up correctly, right? We haven't gotten to uh, the fun part yet. We just want to make sure this works with the GPT-3 sandbox. Let's go ahead and run one of their example files, right? So we're going to just run the uh, Latex app, right? And that's again over here in the examples. They have something just right out of the app, uh, sorry, out of the box that should work if I run it. And we just want to see some success here. So we did not get it. And so what we're also going to do is actually just get rid of this config. Go ahead and comment that out. We'll save it and let's try it again and see if this works. Voila. So what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and open up our local environment where this example app on our local host, right? So the equation, it has this um, and this should work as expected. So it looks like it's all, all the pipelines are working. So let's actually go in and um, make some modifications and create our own web app. I'm not going to go over GPT-3 in a ton of fine grained detail. I have done that in some other videos and you could always read my blog posts which have a lot more detail there. There's also a ton of great literature as this gets into the hands of more and more folks. But for the most part, this is the playground where we can kind of test things out before we put it into code. You have this part where we talk to GPT-3 and this part where we tune some of our parameters and variables. And basically with GPT-3, the thing that makes it work is priming, where we are gonna give it examples with the question and the answer, or the input and the output rather, and then we'll just give it an input. It will learn from these examples, right, from us priming it, and then it will do its best to uh, kind of follow that pattern and generate the output. So um, what I like to do at the top is do a, a brief kind of prompt of letting it know what this is. So we're trying to convert this text to an SQ, uh, a SQL query, right? And what we're saying is we're using the plain English as the input and the output is should be um, the actual SQL query itself. Now, these are uh, real inputs and outputs. Um, I had spent some time on the MBA.com where you can access uh, the database and get the actual columns and schema and um, names there. And I'll link to a, a great repo that has all of the details if you wanna go further there. 
And what you'll see is I'm taking some general queries and I'm kind of letting it know player game logs is an important table, right? NBA stats, player game logs, and I'm kind of giving it these column names, right? Matchup, field goals made, field goals attempted. Um, we know the uh, player name is another table for Anthony Davis, win loss. You're kind of giving it some examples throughout. I try to do a few variations of it. And then at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to just say an example of get the total number of three-point field goals Steph Curry made in the last season. So I haven't said anything about Steph Curry. You know, I've kind of referenced seasons before. I haven't said anything about three-point field goals. Let's move my head out of the way. And then let's hit submit and see what it does. So again, this is GPT-3's best guess at how to convert this to a SQL query. So select 3 p.m. from player game logs where player name is Steph Curry and season ID equals 2021. Not bad. I think the only thing here is 3 p.m. was wrong. It's actually um, field goal three made is how you get that. But for the most part, pretty spot on. Uh, so I think I'm pretty happy with these uh, examples for priming. So we're going to go ahead and use these in our code. Now what we can do is we could actually just view the code from here and export it, but instead we'll kind of build from the GPT-3 sandbox, right, where they have some examples here for the GPT-3, right, where it's kind of taking in this object and we're just going to kind of build off of what they have and input in the variables rather than, rather than copy over all of this text uh, exactly. And again, I'll link to it. There is this unofficial MBA API where you will see a lot of the actual stats, right, with the endpoints, um, with the everything that's static, right, for the players and the teams. And uh, you'll see here the endpoints. So if we kind of find, let's find player game logs, right? So here we are. So if you look here, it actually has a ton of information available as far as what you need for some of the parameters and columns. So you can reference this if you want to make adjustments. I think over time, I'll actually provide the schema um, to GPT-3 and give it a lot more so it becomes a little bit more accurate. And when I do that, I'll open it to the public. But let's jump back over into VS Code to actually start to create our web app. Okay, back in our VS Code terminal, I'm going to split it and keep our Yarn install running over there. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new file where we'll uh, create our MBA SQL app. So let's just create a new file. MBA SQL app will be a Python file. And in this blank example, let's just go ahead and copy um, everything over here because this is what we're going to modify. Um, okay, so construct the GPT object. Again, let's take a look at the repo. And you'll see here, this is that GPT object that we're going to reference where we have the key. You need to set the key to actually initialize it. And then it has various inputs, outputs. Um, and you'll see kind of some of the, uh, the default settings, which we could adjust if we want. But for the most part, this is what we're going to just call with some of those parameters, which we'll see here. We have the engine, the temperature, and the max tokens are the ones we really care about. And if we go back, back over to the playground, here you'll see we have the temperature, the max tokens, and the model is a little bit more updated. Again, this repo is a little old, but we'll go with it. It still works. So we can keep the temperature at 0.5. We can modify it to zero. Zero is a little bit more rigid. 0.5 up to one. Let's say get creative. Not something we, we want. You know, it should be pretty straightforward. We don't want this as creativity. So we can keep it at zero or at even at 0.2. Uh, but let's go back to VS Code. Uh, we'll have a DaVinci. Let's have the temperature be 0.2. Let's just change the max tokens to say uh, 180. It shouldn't really be that long, but just in case we want it to be able to be a longer string. Okay, so this is what constructs the GPT object to basically say, hey, use these parameters. Now, the next thing is this examples, right? So this is where the priming is. And if we go back here, we see uh, we have the class example, um, which we can look up. And you're going to be able to add the example um, here, right, within it to where uh, the example, it's got to be an instance of the example class. And then it's basically added to the object where we're giving it the input and the output. So if we look here, uh, right here, you have the input uh, where, who are you? You have the output, I'm an example. We're gonna do our slightly different to replicate what we had done in the playground. So let me just copy this over and we'll walk through it, right? But we're basically saying, we wanna add the example and we're giving it the example class. We're in the example class, we have the input separated by a comma and we have the output. 
And here, because of how it's constructed, we don't have to say input, output. We can do some of that if you want to get into the questions and answers. But for now, just separated by the comma, we know it's input, comma, output. Format it with the example class and then use this add example to add it to this object, which we uh, had created and constructed here. Great. So now we're saying these are our parameters. This is the priming, right? And now we are on to the actual uh, UI configuration here. So to see the UI configuration, um, let's actually go back to that example we had run and it's still running over here. You'll see it's still running on our local host. So here you have the description, you have the placeholder text and you have the button text, which says translate, right? So let's go back to VS Code. Description is prompt, button text is result and placeholder is uh, where are you? Now, the show example form, if this is true, you will actually see the example forms uh, show beneath it. And if it's false, uh, you won't see them. So we'll keep it true to start the first time we run it so you kind of see these examples. And it actually lets you add or delete examples from the UI. But eventually, we're going to come back and have it be false before we run it for um, good. So for the description, let's say uh, learn SQL with MBA stats. Uh, the button text will be, you know, query because we want to query, uh, get our SQL query. And the placeholder will be, let's give an example of like the one we used of how many threes did Steph Curry make last season? Okay, so, um, so we'll change this. We're going to keep this true. And this looks pretty good. Again, it's not that much. Um, we're, we're bringing in this, um, this class, the example class, and the UI config class, which again is just using this React and, and how we are going to see it on the front end. So let's save this and then let's actually run our MBA. It's within our examples, our MBA SQL app. And what is wrong here? All right. And I wasn't in my virtual environment. Let's try running this again. It's in the examples. It's the MBA SQL app. Let's run it. And here it looks like it's working. It will update because we only can have one thing going on our local host. And again, you'll see here, I had it set to true. So I'm seeing my examples where I can do my input and my output. So if I wanted to add more, I could add an example. I can delete an example. And then you have down here, uh, how many threes did Steph Curry make? I made, I wrote that wrong. So let's just go back to our file. And we're going to go ahead and set this equal to false. And then we're going to update this um, to be the correct one. And basically, let's run a new terminal. All right, and let's try and run it again. It's in the examples with these. Uh, it's called the MBA. Oh, it is called the MBA. And we'll run it, and we'll see this should update. It's going to remove the examples. Um, we'll see here, and let's just change this. Say, instead of Steph Curry, we'll say, how many threes did Seth Curry make? Let's see if we can trick it. I'll give it a second. My internet might be slow and let's run the query when it goes. And voila, and it just changes to Seth Curry. Last season, it looks like it went back one. Um, we'll have to check my examples to see if they're up to date. Uh, but there you have it. We got a working local web app. Well, there you have it. An easy way to write SQL without knowing how to write SQL. Let me know if you like this tutorial. Uh, if so, I'll continue to build it out. I actually got some good feedback um, from a subscriber saying Hugging Face has some really good text to SQL models that we could build upon. So we might dive in there and actually try and get something that's out on production. And I will share all of that code on GitHub. Uh, again, feel free to subscribe to check out some of my other videos. And as always, thank you for tuning in to Learn with Jabe. Bon appetit!